مساء الخير جوتن ابند اند جود ايفنينج اي واز بازل توداي اباوت دوينج ماي سبيتش ان ايذر عربيك اور انجلش اور اي كان دو ات ان جيرمان اي كان اي كان انديرستاند جيرمان بيتر ذان اي كان سبيك ات سو ذس از واي وي ديسايدد ذات اي اولسو دو ات ان انجلش سو ام ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ذا اوبورتونيتي تونايت It's a different speech than what is expected, probably, to speak about uh, the winners and TI Palestine. I think we've heard uh, so much today about uh, uh, TI Palestine. I'm going to present uh, a little bit of what Transparency International does and uh, what Transparency International have been do has been doing in the Middle East and North Africa region uh, for the past 20 years. Of course, we will talk later about uh, how Amman is um, one of the oldest partners of Transparency International in the region and is one of the profound members of the coalition, uh, the global coalition of uh, fighting corruption. So, um, I think uh, you have seen a lot of change in the Arab region recently, and uh, that change is for the past five, year, five years has the, the origin of corruption as one of its main and bases of, uh, of requests by the people to change. Um, so talking about Transparency International, we are a global movement for fighting corruption. The Secretariat is based in Berlin. The founder of Transparency International uh, is a German. His name is Peter Eichen, and I think a lot of you uh, might know him. He's also one of the people that um, was working in, um, in the World Bank and in many international organizations and has felt that corruption in the world is one of the bases of depriving people uh, their basic rights. And we need to fight corruption. This is how the idea of Transparency International started. We have so it was, it was found um, over 22, 23 years ago, and we have now over 100 chapters around the world. Um, so in the Arab region, and it is, it is unfortunate in 22 Arab countries that we only have seven effective chapters. However, the space for NGOs and civil society, the space for people to fight corruption, the, the space for people to even defend basic human rights is not as easy as it sounds. It's not easy for people to stand up for their rights, to stand up and speak loud. And we also have legislations that are not allowing those CSOs and those people and those activists to really form a part of public participation in the fight against corruption. So we have in Palestine, Jordan, Lebanon, Kuwait, Bahrain, Tunisia and Morocco, our current chapters. We have lots of partners that we work with in other countries in the MENA, MENA region. We have tried to partner with uh, people in countries like Egypt, like Algeria, but we've also seen that it has somehow in their endangered them politically inside those countries. So we are known as Transparency International in different, um, in different spectrums. One, one of it is the Corruption Perception, Perception Index, or uh, but the Corruption Perception Index is our well-known tool that we measure uh, countries and how cor corrupt or higher or let's say closer to transparency because we don't have a country that is free of corruption. So we're talking more about how is the level of corruption in the world but also where the countries are. Then we have the corruption barometer that talks about the bribery nationally. And all the other tools that we use, I'll be talking about some of them. But in the Arab region, and um, I'm kind of not uh, used to standing behind <laughs> uh, a podium, 
Despite the political changes in, uh, that shook the Arab region six years ago, the hope for uh, Arab countries to make progress fighting corruption uh, and impunity ended up in disappointment for there could not be perceived any progress. We've started with a hope in Tunisia. We've started that there, is, there are people who are willing to even um, break many barriers and break many um, red lines and taboos to, to fight corruption. We've seen some progress, but we still see some declining of the political will to actually build on, upon these sacrifices that has been done for this, uh, for this cause. Um, the failure of fight corruption is, you can see it now in the Corruption Perception Index of 2016, where we see the five out of the ten most corrupt countries in the world are from the Arab region. And this is a very serious indicator of how, how our region is literally not picking up, not having the political will to actually move forward to fight corruption, despite all the nice news and all the laws that countries might develop and all the ratification of um, the international conventions. But we still have five of the ten worst countries in, the, in, in those. And if you look at the causes, they're all linked to also political instability. We have issues of, ter uh, of terrorism, of um, security, of refugees, of humanitarian aid flooding into these countries, of, and all that, of course, with the lack of democracy, causes bigger uh, risk to corruption. Of course, the Gulf state, uh, one of the one of the regions that um, is not considered even by donors or by the community that it is um, they require aid in such uh, in such uh, area or field. However, the Gulf Air, the Gulf states does not allow for CSOs for independent CSOs or non-governmental organizations to actually work freely for public participation in anything and lack of democracy and they have dropped uh, in the in the corruption perception index for this year too and we've seen so many news coming out of Qatar of Saudi Arabia that is linked to that Qatar had the sharpest decline in the index this year by 10 degree, 10 grades and this is one of the major uh, the clients. We had FIFA corruption scandals, uh, we had the immigrants and human rights violations in the country that is linked also to corruption. Jordan also dropped below 50 compared to last year despite the adoption of new laws and new, um, new ways to open for a better democracy. However, enforcement and the space for fighting corruption and the political will is still lacking. Many reports have shown that the investment is also hindered in the country. Corruption level in Egypt, you probably also have heard of many news, and one of the most profound, like, pr more, one of the most um, dangers to any corruption fighting in any country is, for example, sentencing the Egypt auditing uh, authority. So if you have a, an independent institution like the Auditor General and they are charged of, of, uh, of exposing corruption and put in jail, that gives you a very big signal of how, how the rule of law, how the division of authorities, the executive, the legislative and the uh, judiciary is not existing. In the Global Corruption Barometer for last year, we have asked around 200,000 people across the Arab region. 61% of them think that corruption has increased in the last year. So, as I said again, this is, despite all the laws and all the news about the political will, we still have 
people's perception of corruption being increased. Bribery is widespread. One in three in the Arab region pay bribery. Over 50 million people to basic services, basic human rights services, basic services of education, of health, of police, of judiciary. 50 million people. Governments are failing to fight corruption and the perception that 86% of the people say that their governments are not fighting corruption. One in three have dealt with courts paid a bribe. One in four people who dealt with police paid a bribe. One in five pride bears reported the incidents. This is, this is also an indication of how is the people's will to report corruption. Are they afraid? Would they come? Do they have the channels of reporting corruption? Do they feel safe? to come forward and report that? And will there be any move to address the issue? This is the other thing. Do they have faith in the governments uh, or any authority taking, uh, taking a step towards that? So George Orwell said that people that elect the corrupt politicians, imposters, thieves, and traitors are not victims. They are accomplices. And what that means is that in our TI, TI theory of change, people need to be part of that change. It's people who elect these people into uh, public office. It's people who need to report. They need to hold their go governments accountable. They need to make that sacrifice. And no one is innocent if we get these people into office where we have the corrupt, and then we come and say the government is corrupt. So part of our work as Transparency International in chapters is people's engagement, people's awareness raising, people's, um, we try and promote people to move forward and report that. And of course, I think it's vitamin C also in Germany, which is vitamin well, in <laughs> WASTA, which is um, the uh, secret of success. In, uh, in, and it is unfortunately, in many Arab countries, is not seen as part of corruption. They see it as part of the culture. It's something that people need to actually accept. No, 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 no. I have to talk to this person to get my kid into this uh, place, but I don't consider this as corruption. So this is also an attitude change toward things that are part of the culture, but we need to change. We have another, another um, index which talks about corruption in the defense sector. And this index shows that the region uh, spent $135 billion on defense, and a third of all government spending can be on defense, and we're talking about high-risk countries, and they are not transparent, no one knows how that sector is uh, being run, and you can see how the region is in turmoil. So we have Kuwait, Morocco, Iraq, Libya, Syria, Bahrain, Oman, Egypt, Qatar, Algeria, and Yemen, and they are they have no accountability or transparency in their defense sector. We have Jordan and Tunisia. Somehow, they present the budget of the defense in their, um, in their annual budget. You can see how our region is also, well, Saudi Arabia, uh, of course, high-ranking prince in Saudi Arabia, upside over powerful defense agencies and use those assets to distribute patronage to their client base. In Iraq, Individuals can buy military position with divisions commander job reportedly being sold for two million dollars. In Yemen and Oman, all senior positions within the intelligence services are filled on the basis of political patronage. And of course, not speaking about the ghost uh, soldiers that they have on the budgets that it is distributed all over the place. So. What is fighting corruption for us? It's the tomorrow snow will melt and we'll know who's the corrupt. 
So basically, this is where we kind of move forward in engaging. It's not easy, it's not difficult. But, where is Palestine in all that? You haven't seen me saying anything about Palestine, no? <laughs> no, that's the trick. <laughs> Why? Unfortunately, if you've seen the Corruption Perception Index, we need to have, in order to calculate our sources for how corrupt a country is, we need to have three minimum of three sources for our, uh, for our index. So if a country has three sources of how, how much corruption, how, how do experts perceive corruption in that country, then we're able to calculate the level of corruption in that country. Unfortunately, those indexes do not have Palestine in them as a state. So these sources that we have, they don't consider Palestine as a state. Therefore, we don't have sources to measure the corruption in Palestine. And there where Amman comes in. And this is how we depend on Amman so much to give the perspective of what is the level of corruption. They have their annual, uh, annual reports on corruption in Palestine. So, you can see Israel, if I go here, um, as being, so, okay, this is not, Israel is one of the major ones in the corruption uh, in the defense sector. And you can see that a lot of the corruption that is taking place in Israel affects Palestine. Palestine is, uh, fights, Corruption, a man uh, fights corruption under occupation, which is also something that um, that is not seen in our indexes. We really depend on on a man in Palestine to give information to to be part of the movement that would allow for um, for more information about Palestine. They are one of the oldest members of Transparency International. They are also one of the, um, in the MENA region, one of the core chapters that help us build other chapters in the region. Palestine has, um, has always, or Amman has always been a contributor to... Um, so, corruption in Palestine is highly affected by the occupation. Um, so, no CPI, as I said, results for Palestine, no proper governance system and institutions. This is another thing. Due to the political situation, you have lots of uh, uncertainty in, uh, in the governance system in uh, the state. Uh, civil society organization in Palestine, and you know that in the history, uh, civil society has been running a lot of things in the country, has been providing um, a substitute for institutions, uh, a governmental institutions. So CSOs are very strong. And I think it's one of the um, one of the strongest models of CSOs in the region, um, and the belief in the civil um, civil activism and the way that the Palestinian CSOs has presented has given them that strength. The Coalition for Accountability and Integrity is one of the oldest, and Amman has two main offices in Ramallah and Gaza. So. Um, this is, I think Majdi is going to speak more about what they do, but I think one of the lead uh, things that Palestine, the TI Palestine does, or Aman, is they are founder and lead of civil society team for enhancing public budget transparency, which is a model that we see very successful in bringing together civil society to hold the government accountable for their budget, to monitor the expenditure and to be part of budgeting. Uh, for, the, for the years after. And this is something that we also see as a very successful model that we want to replicate in any other Arab country and we're looking forward for that. We have the Advocacy and Legal Advice Centers and um, this is one of the major tools that TI Palestine has and very strong. And I can tell you a story that when I joined Transparency International five years ago, I met with one member of uh, Amman. And I've been introduced to the tools that our chapters use. 
And he came to me and he said, you know, our ALAC, our Advocacy and Legal Advice Center, we're doing these trainings for, for kids at schools to come and report corruption. And they had this uh, story of these female, th these students, and there were three female students who had decided to take upon a case. And they decided to take a small sample of the asphalt, you know the asphalt, the street, the asphalt, yeah. And they decided to go to Birzeit University, and they decided to measure the quality of that asphalt based, of course, on the training of a man of how you report corruption, they decided to ask for information about the procurement, about the uh, company that did that asphalt. And they found out that the asphalt that they have found in Birzeit, the, the results, are different to the procurement that has been given. And they moved this case to the anti-corruption agency and the company was tried and they have opened a corruption case against the company. This is how effective this uh, tool could be, this is how effective a man could be of making young people come and report corruption. I'm not going to speak more about a man. Their work speaks for themselves and um, you can see a lot of things that they're doing and we hope we are very, very, very happy that they were recognized, their work has been recognized, and uh, we wish them, of course, we give them all our support, and we wish our support, and we wish them also a big success. Congratulations.